Hello, this is Mrs. Bohatch, and this little explain it is about calculations with significant figures. There are two rules that you want to remember when calculating with significant figures. One rule is you, you, you will use whenever you add or subtract, and then there's a second rule that you will use when you multiply or divide. Alright, let's talk about the rules for addition and subtraction. Basically, you're going to count decimal places because you cannot report a number that is any more precise than the least precise tool you used to record the measurements. On the next slide, I'll show you what I mean by that. In our first example, we have three numbers that we're going to add up. What we're going to do is examine the decimal places. In this number right here, we have uh, two decimal places. In this number we have three decimal places and in this number we have four decimal places. So we have to go ahead and do the addition. We get this big long number here and then we go back and we're going to round to the least number of decimal places. This number contains the least number of decimal places so we have to round to the hundredths. Therefore 8.04 is the correct answer. In this example, the second example, same process. This is a subtraction. This first number has four decimal places. The second number here has five decimal places. So we have to round to the number that contains the least number of decimal places. So we'll go out four decimal places and round, and therefore our answer is .0509. The rules for multiplication and division are different from the rules for addition and subtraction. In this case, we're going to actually count sig figs. And we are going to report our number um, the same as the least precise number, which will contain the least number of significant figures. There's an example in the next slide that will clarify this. In this first example, we have two numbers that we're going to multiply. This first number right here contains five significant figures. This number only contains two significant figures. So when we are done multiplying, we get this big long number, but we're going to have to round it so that in the end, it only contains two sig figs. One, two. In the second example, we're dividing. So we're going to go ahead and divide the number, and then we're going to examine each part. This one has three significant figures, and this one has five significant figures. So therefore, our answer must be rounded to the number that has the least number of significant figures. That would be three. So 7.11 is the correct answer. So perhaps the question you're thinking is, what should you do if you have to add and subtract, and then multiply and divide? Well, here's how it works. Follow the order of operations. So we're going to do the parentheses first in the example. If you switch between addition and subtraction, and then multiplication and division, you should record your answer to the proper sig figs before you move on. So example, we're going to do the parentheses first here. This is addition, so we count decimal places. So when we go ahead and add these two numbers, we get a number like 5.55, but we only have one decimal place here, so we have to go ahead and round this to one decimal place. That's why the answer here is 5.6. So now we have our 5.6, and we're going to go and finish our mathematical problem here and multiply it by 6.000. Now we're on multiplying and dividing, and in this case, you count the number of sig figs. Notice here, there are two sig figs, but in this number over here, there are four sig figs. Therefore, our answer can only be written to two sig figs. So we're going to round 33.6 to two sig figs. That comes out to be 34.